Well, thanks, Alicia, and thanks, everyone, for being here this morning. Um, thanks for hosting this conference. Thanks to everyone who organized it, and thanks to UBC for hosting this uh, wonderful event. Uh, it's actually my first time in Vancouver, um, so it's a beautiful city, beautiful campus. Um, I was just a little surprised. The first restaurant I saw when I got off the plane was a Burger King, and the first coffee shop I saw was Starbucks, so um, I realized I wasn't actually that far from home, which is the Bay Area. So, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit today about things you all probably know a lot about, which is the energy and climate challenge, and some other challenges as well. Um, I'm going to try to offer some insight into the nature and scale of these challenges um, and offer a perspective and a framework uh, to make progress on confronting these challenges. Um, and I'm going to put it in a context of a broader story that I think is really important about human innovation and human progress. Um, so actually, I wanted to start by talking about you know, this, uh, this week is actually the 40th anniversary of a very important event that took place, which was the first um, man who walked on the moon, the, the moon landing, the original U.S. moon landing. Um, and, you know, this was a pretty, you know, historical event. And I think it's, uh, you know, a very important sort of just moment that kind of reminds us, you know, the power of human innovation and what human, you know, what humans can accomplish and really the heights of human possibility. Um, so it's the 40th anniversary, and it was a big kind of celebration this week in the United States. Um, but as Neil Armstrong said, you know, it was, it was not just, it was one small step for a man and one giant leap for mankind. It was not just an accomplishment for the United States, but really for humanity as a whole. Um, so, you know, I, so I wanted to start with that because I think it's, uh, it's kind of one example, really, of a larger story of human progress that I think we should start with as we kind of, we kind of talk about these major challenges that we're facing. Um, and this is a uh, representation of global GDP per capita from 1800 to 2005. And I wanted to just show this, just kind of give um, a representation of the progress that humanity has made um, and the power of how human innovation and how human innovation has driven human progress, driven economic growth, and not just overall, you know, size of the economy, but actually per person. Um, so we've made astounding progress, um, particularly over the 20th century, um, but really, you know, starting, you know, really starting with the, the birth of modernity um, in the 16th and 17th century. Um, you know, along with the, this, this sort of story of human progress have been, you know, developments in all kinds of areas, and this is just one example. This is a, a, a representation of U U.S. life expectancy lifespan starting in 1930. Uh, up to 2004, and that doesn't even go back before 1930. Um, but this, this is, of course, has been replicated globally. Um, so, you know, with, with modernity, with development, um, you know, we're seeing things like this where actually China may surpass, you know, U.S. GDP by the early 2020s. Um, so we're seeing massive development all across the world, um, and it's, it's shared, it, you know, and there are problems. There's, there's huge amounts of poverty left in the world that we have to confront, and it's major, you know, major challenges, major problems. But this is, a, this is a representation of what we may see. This is 2010 global GDP, the share between the developing world and the developed world. Um, that's the share in 2100 that we are expected to see along current growth trends. Um, so, you know, so we have a lot of poverty. We have a lot of problems. But the overall story that we're seeing is human progress, um, greater lifespans, you know, greater, greater human happiness, and uh, greater prosperity for all of us. And so, you know, just to put a face on what this means for all of us, this, this, this development, this human progress, this story leads from situations like this and some of the poorest areas of Africa to technologies that allow us to educate our children, um, to, to, you know, to have hospitals and schools and modern infrastructure, um, to areas like this. And this is just one city in China now, just sprawling megatropolis. Um, that provides all kinds of services to its citizens um, and also consumes huge amounts of energy, as you can see from this. <clears throat> and in fact, we've seen a massive increase in the use of energy associated with this development. Um, and in fact, energy consumption is strongly correlated with development and all of these trends that we're seeing. And that makes sense. It takes a lot of energy. To, to build roads, to build hospitals, to build schools, to power our computer systems, to power our lighting, to build all kinds of the infrastructure that's really the basis for modern civilization. So this is a representation of global energy capacity from 1900 to 2005, and you can see major increases in use per person and total use. 
and of course associated with that energy use unfortunately has been the emission of a certain pollutant, carbon dioxide, that unfortunately happens to be causing um, global warming. And you all know all about that, so I'm not going to get into the, you know, the potential impacts on that. I'm sure you're all very aware. Um, but this has been an unfortunate side effect of, of, of a story of human progress that we had no idea was happening up until just recently. That really our ancestors were building a more modern civilization because they believed that it would contribute to progress for their families, their loved ones, and their children. But they had no idea that it was causing this, this emissions growth. And uh, it happens to be an unfortunate side effect that we now have to address. <clears throat> now, to, in 2004, the, uh, the world consumed about 14.5 terawatts. Actually, that's capacity. Uh, the world's energy capacity in 2004 was about 14.5 terawatts. Um, we're expected to double to quadruple that energy capacity by 2050. And these are projections from the International Energy Agency and some of the best, the top energy experts in the world. And this, so, so if we say, you know, 2050, we go from about 15 to, 20, to 60 terawatts, even if we, say, accomplish efficiency gains of 30%, 40%, we still have to double or triple our total energy consumption around the world to meet demand. Um, and that's, that's a massive challenge. And you know, not only do we have to, you know, all the energy increases that we, we have, not only do those all have to be low carbon, we have to actually replace all of our entire um, energy infrastructure. And so there was, a, there was a Nobel Prize winning chemist and physicist named Richard Smalley, who unfortunately passed away in 2005. But he looked at the nature of this challenge, and uh, he dubbed it the terawatt challenge. And uh, he actually, the, the slide I showed before is actually one from his presentation. Um, and what he called the terawatt challenge was, and what, what he kind of described it as, is the challenge of increasing global energy capacity from 15 terawatts a day to around 60 terawatts in 2050 in a way that simultaneously addresses global warming and human development. And so this is actually from a paper he wrote and from his pre presentation. He, this is his list of humanity's top 10 problems for the next 50 years. And so he listed them out. He actually listed all the ones below energy first. And he started to draw the lines between them. And he started to realize that energy was really at the heart of so many of them. That um, even water, that we're going to have to desalinize huge amounts of water to meet demand around the world. Um, food relies so heavily on, uh, on energy. Um, the environment to stop global, the slow global warming, we're going to have to uh, uh, reduce our emissions, and that requires new, you know, fundamentally new energy sources. That uh, you know, poverty, um, poverty alleviation is very associated with uh, promoting energy development. Um, that terrorism and war, a lot, a lot of the issues we're seeing with terrorism and uh, you know the the issues in the Middle East are related to energy and the use of oil. Um, so he came up with this graph, and he said that energy um, is the top challenge for humanity over the next 50 years.